Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. We are each a child of God. No matter who we are or where we are on life's journey, we are blessed. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. We come to worship the God who feeds us, who fills us, and who blesses us. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Let us rejoice in the love of God and worship God together in prayer, song, and praise. God of many blessings, be with us in our joy and in our sorrow. Help us to reach out with your love to those in need. 
that we may not be satisfied until all are fed. Bless each of us here and all who cannot be present with us today. Shower your blessings on our worship as we pray all this through Jesus the Christ, our teacher and our guide. Amen. Welcome into this sacred and holy space. Welcome into this technological time of worship and wonder. Without an acolyte to bring the light of Christ into our midst each week, and then to remind us as we leave worship that we carry the light of Christ into the world. It has become our message for all ages ritual to light a candle in our at-home worship spaces. There is power in this light and love in our midst, burning bright and bold as a collective community and as individual bodies. We all remember today that we are blessed to carry the spark of light with us wherever we go. We also are called to pay attention to what we see around us in worship too. Our Sunday school lessons always start grounded in lighting a candle and discussing our liturgical color. For a few more weeks until Lent, we continue to see green in church. In these dreary winter days, green is a sprig of hope, a reminder of things to come, and a promise that buried under layers of sadness or snow, there is growth underneath. Green in church is a reminder that it is time for us to grow in God's love, to grow a deeper understanding of how to be in relationship with God, to deeply care for ourselves and love our minds and our bodies, and to continue to nurture ways that we can be in community with our neighbors. February is Black History Month. And last week I mentioned a resource, Voices of Black Midland. You can find the website and explore on your own or see daily posts on our UCC Midland Facebook page. Today, on what the National UCC Church recognizes as Racial Justice Sunday, I have another beautiful story to share with you. To protect the work of author Angela Joy, illustrator Akua Holmes and Roaring Book Press, if you happen to be watching the video recording of worship at a later time, you'll be directed to a link to get more information about this amazing book. As you can see, I also have a hard copy. So if anyone would like to borrow it at any time, just let me know. In addition to profound words and beautiful images to learn from, the author has also curated a music video playlist on YouTube that is a powerful learning tool as well. I will share the link for that playlist in the chat and on Facebook after I read this story. Black is a rainbow color.
Testament scripture for this morning is Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 8. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when he comes and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. Our next reading comes to us from Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. It is sometimes referred to as Jesus' Sermon on the Plain. Just prior to this reading, Jesus has been up on a hillside praying during the night. <clears throat> Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples. And a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear Jesus and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch Jesus, for power came out from him, and he healed all of them. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is where their, what their, that they did to their ancestors and the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. So ends our readings for this day. Amen. If in the last few years you've been in a store that sells decorative items for the home, you have most likely come across wall art with inspirational sayings on it, or if you've visited the Etsy site or other such internet sites. These art pieces proclaim such things as, begin each day with a grateful heart, or don't look back, you're not going that way. Now, before I go any further with this sermon, let me say that I have nothing against inspirational sayings. If one of those pieces of art offers you encouragement, I support you in including it in your decor. There is, however, one piece of inspirational art that I have difficulty with. It's the one that involves the saying, too blessed to be stressed. Too blessed to be stressed. I'm not sure where this rhyming phrase originates from or what the original author intends for it to mean, but I believe that it can cause emotional harm. For you see, it says to me that if you trust that you are blessed by God, you won't experience any stress in your life. The flip side being, if you have stress, 
you must not be trusting God enough. I don't know about any of you, but my faith in God has never prevented me from experiencing stress in my life. Stress, which is defined as a state of mental or emotional strain caused by adverse or demanding circumstances, comes around in my life on a regular basis. There are times when I feel stress related to my responsibilities to my family and to this church. I also feel stress when I hear of injustices taking place in our country, the degradation of our planet, and the tensions that exist between nations. According to this very popular piece of wall art, I am either not blessed or I'm lacking in faith. This morning's reading from Luke offers a different perspective on what it means to be blessed. After Jesus spends some time on the hillside praying, he comes down to a level place to be among the people. At that time, numerous individuals surround Jesus, wishing to hear a word of hope and to be healed of their afflictions. In what is now referred to as the Sermon on the Plain, Jesus offers a series of four blessings which go against the conventional wisdom of that time. In that culture, it was believed that God blesses people with wealth, good health, and a large family. Jesus says that the people who are blessed are the poor, the hungry, the grieving, and those who are hated by others. Is this to suggest that God causes people to be hungry and poor and grieving and hated? By no means. Rather, Jesus is proclaiming that God cares deeply about the plight of those who are suffering. These blessings reflect what Jesus has told people his ministry is all about. Jesus has come to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, healing to the afflicted, and freedom to the oppressed. Being blessed it's not about receiving earthly rewards or even being free from trouble. Neither is it a state of happiness or bliss. To be blessed is to know that wherever you go and whatever happens to you in your life, you are not alone and that you have great value. God comes to you and says, you are not forgotten. I am with you. This message of hope offered to people on a plane many years ago offers encouragement to all of us. Whether or not we are financially poor or physically hungry, every one of us experiences difficulties and challenges in life. For example, no one gets through this life without experiencing some form of grief. We grieve the loss of people we love, we grieve the problems facing our world. We grieve mistakes that we have made, failed dreams, and broken relationships, just to name a few. These blessings remind us that God has not forgotten us and that God cares about us. God is present in our pain and surrounds us with love. It says to me, we don't have to put on a front that everything is okay. There is great comfort in knowing that God understands our tears. You will recall that after offering four blessings, Jesus goes on to share four woes, saying, Woe to you now, woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Although the word woe has a negative connotation, I hear Jesus using this word to remind people that they have a responsibility to be a blessing to others. That is, 
If you have resources, God calls you to share them so that others might live. It's the same message that the prophets had been declaring for generations prior to Jesus. People of faith are called to care for the most vulnerable ones of society. The beautiful thing is, Jesus didn't just talk about caring for the suffering. Jesus engaged personally with those who suffer, feeding the hungry, healing the hurting, advocating for those who are mistreated, and uplifting the oppressed. Doing those things revealed God's love for other people. In addition to having a responsibility for caring for others, Jesus makes it clear that individuals are not to allow their worldly achievements, financial status, or the praise of others to cause them to look down at people or to laugh at others' expense. For you see, those who are only concerned about their own needs or their own reputation separate themselves from God. Just as the blessings offered by Jesus offer a word of hope to us, these woes serve as a reminder to us. As one biblical commentator says, to the extent that we find ourselves in prosperity or satisfaction or privilege, Jesus brings us a word of challenge, exhorting us to share God's blessings with our neighbors and with all of creation. As the original disciples discovered, doing this can sometimes lead to us being scorned by other people. This is sometimes the case for people of faith who fight for the rights of all people, including those in the LGBT community. Jesus told the disciples not to lose heart when others hated them for proclaiming God's love for all people. May we not lose heart as we continue to make this same proclamation in the 21st century. And by the way, I had no idea that Jim was going to include our open and affirming statement in our musical offering today. In our staff, we always refer to that as the work of the Spirit. As one biblical commentator points out, blessings and woes are not two separate ideas. They are two sides of the same gospel. Jesus' Sermon on the Plain offers a vision of a world of generosity, love, life, and compassion. Those are things people who are hungry, poor, and sad understand and long for. They're ready and they're waiting for God's world or reign to come. And they welcome it with joy when it does. People who live in ways that make life good for themselves but hard for others don't have much space for generosity, love, life, and compassion. That this kind of world will come is a tough message for them to hear. No wonder Jesus says that they are going to weep. So going back to those inspirational wall hangings that I referred to at the beginning of my sermon, I may not feel that I am too blessed to be stressed, but I trust that I do not face my stress alone that God is with me. That gives me the strength I need to continue living out the responsibilities of my life. Responsibilities that include caring for myself and caring for other people. So perhaps I need a piece of wall art that states, I am blessed in my stress. Let me know if you'd like me to make one of those for you as well. Thanks be to God for these blessings and woes offered on a plane 2,000 years ago and still relevant today. Amen.
And now my friends, I invite us to focus our hearts and our minds for a time of prayer. Most faithful and loving God, as this church prepares to hold its annual meeting, we give thanks for the many ways in which your love is shared through word and action. We are grateful for the courage and the conviction of those who have worked and continue to work to create greater justice for all people. We are grateful for the many ways in which people compassionately care for others beyond this church through their occupations, their volunteer efforts, and their individual acts of compassion. We are grateful for the many ways in which people enrich the life of this church with their gifts, including music, teaching, cooking, carpentry, technology, organization, and so many other gifts. We are grateful for challenges that have led us to expand our ministries, including our outreach through virtual worship. We are grateful for the support offered within this fellowship to those who are hurting, grieving, and lonely. We are grateful for the generosity of spirit that empowers us to feed the hungry, house the homeless, offer shelter to the abused, and support to those who are struggling. Yes, oh God, we are grateful for every opportunity that we have to follow the example of Jesus and welcome all people into your loving realm. And now it is out of love for others and for self that we enter a time of silent prayer. Most gracious God, we do indeed give thanks for Vern and for Willie and for all the individuals who helped to give birth to this wonderful congregation. We pray that your comfort and your peace would surround the family of Diane's brother, Jim, and of Janet's cousin, Bob, that they may feel your love coming to them from all the compassionate care of others. We give thanks that John and Callie have come through this tragic event in their lives and pray that you would continue to guide them as they rebuild their lives. United in the spirit of Christ's love, O oh God, we offer this prayer that Jesus once shared with those original disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now having been blessed by this time of coming together for worship, we return to our daily lives to be blessings to others. We do so trusting that the love of God empowers us to be disciples in this day and age. 
let us now go forth in God's peace. Amen.